We want to be transparent. We're not looking to surprise markets with these decisions. Okay? If you hold crypto, pay attention. Jerome Powell today just made some pretty bold statements on the future of this economy in 2023 from his point of view as chairman of the Fed. Now, I watched this whole thing, so you don't have to. Again, I watched this whole thing, like always, so you don't have to. So let me share with you five clips on what you need to know as a crypto investor. In this first clip, Jerome Powell is asked point blank. Since your last rate increase by 25 basis points, which literally just happened last week. Since then, like subscribers of this channel know, the unemployment numbers right now are at a 53-year low. It is sort of crazy that the federal funds rate, the interest rate, is being pushed so high so fast by the Fed. Yet the numbers tell us that we're not seeing layoffs. In fact, they're telling us we're seeing the opposite. In this first 90-second clip, Jerome Powell responds to, If you would have known that the labor market numbers were going to be so strong, would you have raised more? than just 25 basis points. You made a speech last week commenting on the FOMC's decision to raise the Fed discount rate by uh, a, a small amount, relatively speaking, 25 basis points. Some people would say that was small. Um, but at the time, it wasn't clear that the jobs report would be as strong as it turned out to be subsequently. Had you known that the jobs report was going to be as strong, would you have done 25 basis points or something different? David, thank you for that question. And thank you. <laughs> thank you for inviting me here today. It's great to be here. Uh, so we don't get to play it that way, unfortunately. We have to, uh, but I'll, so I'll, I'll take it this way. Uh, so the message we were sending at the FOMC meeting last Wednesday was really that um, the disinflationary process, the process of getting inflation down, has begun. And it's begun in the goods sector, which is uh, about a quarter of our economy. But it has a long way to go. These are the very early stages of disinflation. So the services sector really, except for housing services, <coughs> pardon me, uh, is not really showing any, any disinflation yet. So our message really was this process is likely to take quite a bit of time. Uh, it's not going to be, uh, we don't think, smooth. It's probably going to be bumpy. And so we think that we're going to need to do further rate increases, as we said, and we, we think that we'll need to hold policy at a restricted level for a period of time. Then comes the uh, the, the uh, labor market report for January. And it's very strong. It's certainly stronger than anyone I know expected. <clears throat> and so, but, but I would say, we didn't expect it to be this strong, but I would say it, it kind of shows you why we think that this will be a, a, a process that takes a significant period of time. The, the labor market's extraordinarily strong. So Jerome Powell says that yes, of course, hindsight is 2020. It's good that we've started to see the disinflationary process without impact on labor markets. In fact, this was bullish for markets. Bitcoin rises to over $23,000, as Jerome Powell repeats, disinflationary process comment, meaning a more dovish outlook than all of 2022, saying that we've started to see a shift. But then he makes clear, that because the economy, the labor markets, etc., are so strong, this may be a longer process than anticipated. Now we have one more jobs report coming next month that will be before the Fed's next meeting. If the unemployment numbers remain trending higher, will that equal a higher set of rate hikes, not just another 25 basis points? You know, we, put, we throw these numbers around, but the reality is we're going to react to the data. So if we continue to get, for example, strong labor market uh, reports or higher, higher uh, inflation reports, it may well be the case that we have to do more and raise like, like more than this price ten. So yes, if the unemployment rate continues to trend lower next month, then yes, he could see a future where him and the Fed would then be justified to be able to push the interest rate even higher. Now checking back in on United States inflation today, yes, we've started a trend down, which is positive, but we're still, still way, way, way off from the 2% target Jerome Powell has stated he needs to see he wants to get to by the end of the year. Well, my question to you, Jerome Powell, why push us to 2%? Can we not just settle on 3% by year's end? Okay, so you've said the inflation rate target is 2%. Um, but why 2% and not 3%? 3%, you know, could be tolerable, really. I mean, most, for most of organized history, 3% is considered okay. Why do you want 2%? So 2% is the global standard, and that is our objective. 2% PC, as measured by the, the uh, PCE uh, index. And that's just, that's not something we're looking at changing. That isn't going to change. It's, that's not going to change. Not going to change, no. But, okay, so you need to get the 2%, and your goal to get there is by what period of time would you like to get there? Well, we say, we say that we're using our tools to get there over time. If you look at our forecasts, we expect 2023 to be a year of significant declines in inflation, and it's actually our job to make sure that that's the case. But I would tell you that, uh, you know, with inflation, headline, headline uh, PCE inflation is running about 5%. This is on a 12-month basis. Core is running at 44 My guess is it will take certainly into not just this year, but next year to get down close to 2%. Okay, so 2% is firm. That's, you're not yes. off that. Yes, okay. So 2% is firm, but it doesn't have to be this year. That's new. He does say it'll probably take into 2024 to bring us that low. But then, of course, the fear is, if you keep pushing rates this high, like we've seen over and over and over again, a Fed 
you tend to push us into a recession. Jerome Powell responds to this, and his stance is pretty clear that this time's different. He doesn't think we'll end up breaking the economy, in his opinion, and he explains why. Most, most analysts, most economists would say that to get inflation down from high levels that we've had, if you look at history, there is some softening in labor market conditions that goes along with that. And that is still, you know, very possible and indeed likely here, some softening in labor market conditions. However, this cycle is different from other cycles because of where it came from, and it's just confounded all, all sorts of attempts to predict what it would do. So it is good that we have seen a very strong labor market, but at the same time, we're seeing wages moderating. Wages are still very, wage increases are still very high, but wage increases have come down to a level that is closer to what would be sustainable, still well above what would be sustainable with 2% inflation. And same thing with inflation. In, in, inflation is starting to come down and the labor market hasn't softened. We do expect that it will soften, um, but you know, it will do what it will do. Our job is to get inflation down to 2% and preserve maximum employment. So all in all, of course you'd say that this cycle will be different. Of course you'd say, no, we're not going to be pushed into recession. You make your own decision on whether you want to believe it or not. As I get more data every month, I'll make a video. We will update our opinion. But in summation, my takeaway from this whole conversation today, that interviewer certainly was asking Powell some tough questions, but Powell did not really budge at all on his views. Once again, Powell was just reiterating what he's been saying for months. Of course, Bitcoin and markets popped just a little after this conference because Powell did take the labor market questions pretty dovish, which was nice to see. I disagree. He was clearly stating that numbers have changed and he sees potentially higher rates than normal. He was saying a lot of new things today. Next month, we will get new data. Next month, we will get a new press conference. As this comes out, make sure you click subscribe. You do not want to miss a daily video keeping you informed. By the way, make sure you join us for Bitcoin 2023. Awesome conference. Ticket prices do increase in three days, so make sure you use code Altcoin Daily for 10% off your ticket. Link down below. See you there. So what is the salary of the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board? It's um, it's around $190,000, I believe. Okay, so you, you live on $190,000. If you need to sell something, what do you do? You have to clear it for 45 days? Or, that's right. We, we, you know, to, to, we have family expenses that, if we have them, that exceed you know, my salary, then we have to sell them. I think that's a fair salary for the job, or I do? Yes, no. Okay, so today, 